50 and 62 inch wide coils available. So this is obviously going to help you, uh, you know, uh, optimize your yields with different widths. So we have these six available as well, full technical support. We have our, our fearless leader, uh, president CEO, Bill Yanetti, uh, at our service. That's very unique in the industry as well. You don't really have many presidents of, of large companies, uh, you know, being able to, to help. Um, and then our, uh, our structural engineer, Jim Moses, he's our uh, technical service manager. Squared sheet eliminates the need to having uh, to square one side before fabrication. And then good side up or down. I'm not sure if uh, Walters and Wolf knows this, uh, but yeah, you're able to get sheet good side up or down. So that's why I'll Pollock. It's a, you know, just a little example of, of how we do things differently. Uh, for sustainability efforts, Al Pollock is sustainable material. Uh, whether that's efficient manufacturing process, whether that's our uh, project Encore, where when the panels need to be decommissioned, you would send them back to Alpolic and we would actually 100% recycle the material. So that's going to be prying off the aluminum skins, recycling those skins, recycling the plastics in the core, uh, you know, the opportunity to build with greater thermal efficiency, negligible v VOCs that get burnt off in the... Uh, in the painting process, rigidity, finish durability, FEV, Lumiflon, the uh, really the highest weatherability in paint out there compared to your uh, PVDFs. Uh, and then easy end of life recycling, like I mentioned with our project Encore with virtually 100% recovery. Now, coastal warranty, this is big for Walters and Wolf because you know we do a lot of work, not only in the Bay Area, down South in, in LA, if we're working on any project that is within 1500 feet of salt water or brackish water, and you want some sort of warranty on them, what we're going to do is we're going to fill out our coastal warranty exemption form, basically saying how much material, what finish, what core, where is it going to be on the, uh, on the building? We're going to send that to Sherwin Williams. Excuse me, guys. We're going to send that to Sherwin Williams and they are going to uh, approve it or not for a coastal warranty. So basically when we're working with a, you know, a dark color, whether that's a metallic or whether that's a solid or a mica, most likely we're gonna get approved. It's really the pigments in the paint that are going to establish if Sherwin-Williams is gonna approve the coastal warranty or not. So if we're working with a bright red, bright orange, bright yellow, most likely we'll, we'll need to add a clear coat. So what we need to do, two coat solids and micas, if we, get approval from Sherwin Williams. We don't need to take any action with the material. We'll automatically get a 20 year finish. So I know on the uh, one of your Lawson Lane projects, we submitted, I believe it was MAI uh, Silver, Micah Silver. We submitted that to Sherwin Williams for a coastal warranty. We got approval for that. Now we have a 20 year finish warranty on that material. Now, if we don't get approved, meaning you know, if we use a bright green, yellow, red, blues, we must add, and you want uh, you want some sort of finish warranty, and that's going to be a, a maximum ten year. We must add a clear coat to the material. So if we're working with a two coat mica or uh, solid, we're going to have to add a clear coat to the material. Now it's going to be custom. Now, uh, and we must we must create a drawdown sample for approval. So now this is going to be you know custom lead times, custom pricing, custom minimums are involved with that, and we must fill out the uh, color match form. Now, when we're working with a three coat metallic and we are approved, we don't need to take any action, automatically receive a 20 year finish. Uh, but if we're not approved, uh, really we don't need to do anything since it already has that clear coat on top and we'll get a 10 year finish on that. So uh, for coastal warranties, if we don't get approved, the max we can get is 10 year. We'll have to add that clear coat on top. And let me know any questions, just shout them out. I'll be happy to answer them. So for our custom production, 4,000 square feet for no upcharges. We've seen that, you know, Walters and Wolf, we work on, on large projects, really don't need to worry about uh, any upcharges, right? Because mostly we'll, we'll be over 4,000. And you can see here with the standard widths. Now with upcharges, minimum 1,000 square feet for our painted material. Uh, lead time right now, we've seen about seven to eight weeks. So, uh, you know, usually we're around four to six, but, um, you know, things are happening on the East Coast and we got to, uh, we got to change them a little bit. For overages, 1,000 to 12,000 square feet, 5% overage, 12,000 to 40,000, 2%, and 40 to 75,000, 1%.
that'd be nice if we got a couple 75,000 square foot jobs. Now, available lengths in the industry, 72 to 288 inches long. So that's going to be, if we want to work with any stock material, you can change whatever length that you want. You'll have to keep that same width if you want the stock pricing. You can go any, any length you want. There'll be minimum 10 pieces per that length. So if you want, say, BSX silver metallic, you go 62 inch wide and say you only want it in 72 inches long, you'll have to go a 10 piece minimum for that 72 inch long material. Now for material availability, we have copper, we have stainless steel, we have four different types of stainless steel, as well as if I can get this sample out quickly here. So we have bronze stainless steel available and I can get you all samples of this. We have our normal, stainless steel material, you know, brushed, uh, close to brush number four. And then we also have black stainless steel material available. So black and bronze, I can get you samples of these. Uh, you know, we'll have to work with, uh, with clients with, uh, you know, a little deeper pockets with the stainless material. It is more expensive than your typical painted product. We also have zinc, pigmento zinc, whether that's, uh, you know, our stock gray zinc or black, blue, red, brown, gray titanium as well, anodized material, brick metal, as you all know, and then patterns available. You have timber, you have stone, you have granite, you have marble, uh, 53 finishes available. Copper, four mil PE, you can go FR, 0.016 inch uh, skin. So for custom four or six mil PE or FR, 12 ounce, 38 inches wide, you can get anywhere from 72 to 288 inches long, 15 pieces per length and six to eight month lead time. Uh, the process of smelting the coil and delivering it, pretty long lead time. For stainless, our stock stainless is four mil FR brushed hairline, no minimums, come stocked in 39.37, 146 inches long. For stainless steel, I have samples here. We have our stock brush stainless steel. Uh, we also have polished stainless steel, only, only manufacturer in the industry who has four different types of stainless steel. You have polished here. You have linen available, which uh, the 200 Park in San Diego, our linen was considered, uh, but didn't go linen. Linen available. It's got that woven pattern. Uh, let me know if you want samples. I'm happy to send them over. And then you have dull. Dull is going to be uh, kind of like a bead blasted look dull stainless steel. So we have four different types of stainless steel available, which is unique in the industry. As you can see here, the minimums, what they're stocked in, uh, different width, different pricing, lead time six to eight months for really any custom uh, natural metal. And then you have your uh, you know, stock zinc material, FR, uh, four mil, 38 by 146, no minimum because it's, it's stock. If you wanna go with custom stock base, four mil or six, six mil available, FR core, 0.5 mil or 0.7 mil skin, there will be a difference in price. 38 inches wide is going to be 0.5 mil. Anything other than that is going to be 0.7. 15 pieces per length. We'll have to have a 12,000 square foot minimum first, and then we can look at different uh, minimums per length. 11 to 13 week lead time. And then for pigmento zinc, as you can see, all these uh, different minimums. And I can get you samples of these pigmento zincs as well. Uh, our CZZ Black Anthra just went to uh, stock material. So there is no minimums for that lead time, 14 to 16 weeks for this pigmento zinc here. Titanium, we don't have any titanium in the state, so that would be awesome if we had some in NorCal. FR core, four mil or six mil, 39.37 or 148 inches wide, uh, minimum 22,000 square feet. So as you can see, I've uh, got to have a, a massive project. Lead time, six to eight months. Uh, titanium, very unique, and we'll get into that in the uh, presentation in a couple of weeks. Anodized material, stock material is our clear anodized. We also have frost anodized available. This is proprietary to Al Pollock. Now frost anodized, it's gonna look a little bit frostier than your clear anodized here, if we can see on the right. Clear anodized, frost anodized, proprietary to Al Pollock, which we've seen uh, you know, be, be very helpful in the industry. 50, 62 inches wide, 148, 198 inches long. Anodized custom, if we wanna stay with our base stock material, we go four mil FR core, 
You can go black, light bronze, medium bronze, dark bronze, champagne, frost anodized as well. As you can see here, you got to stay with those widths. You got to stay with the lengths. 10 pieces per color, 15% plus or minus six to eight week lead time. And then fully custom, you have these uh, sizes available, three, four, six mil. You can go PE or FR core. Uh, got to stay with the 50 or 62 inches wide. And then you have, uh, you know, the 72 to 288 inches long uh, lengths there. As you can see, 10 to 12 week lead time versus six to eight weeks. Now, break metal, four by 10. Uh, if you want to go with a, a custom color or a color that we don't stock, break metal in minimum 2,000 square feet, uh, custom width, 48 inches only, minimum 25,000, uh, excuse me, 25 pieces. Overage, 20% plus or minus for custom color, lead time seven to nine weeks for custom color. Now, timber series, you have Walnut, mahogany, oriental cane, zero wood, teak, maple, harvest shell, bamboo, and Rio Allion. You have, uh, you really have nine available. That I believe there's only eight here, but you have nine finishes available. And let me know if you'd like any samples. We'll be happy to send them over. Uh, and I think we have one more slide after this. Pattern availability, as you can see, marble, granite, timber, carbon fiber, brushed aluminum, processed bronze, patina copper. 4 mil FR core, 3850 or 62 inches wide. Now, if we want to meet the uh, Buy America Act, we'll need to uh, manufacture it in Chesapeake, minimum 22,000 square feet. So it's a large minimum. Uh, if we don't need to meet the Buy America Act, we can produce it in Japan, minimum 7,000 square feet. And for that material, 14 to 16 week lead time after receipt of PO. All right, so that does it for our Wild Pollock brochure, or excuse me, uh, presentation. Now I am going to go to our AIA number one presentation. Now this is an overview of MCM as a whole. There's a lot of information here. So let me just tell me to skip the slide and I'll skip it. Uh, so we'll look through some pictures first. Uh, you have Australia, Istanbul, Argentina, Sao Paulo, New Balance in Boston, Neiman Marcus, Let's see, where's, where are our Walters and Wolf projects? They're coming up. Okay, they're after the presentation. All right, so design and specification of MCM in today's architecture. Now, what we're gonna be going over today is uh, what MCM means, the product, uh, physical product characteristics, finished product characteristics, the manufacturing process, and um, you know the relationship between you and I. MCM, what does it mean? Metal composite material. What is in the realm of MCM? You have your ACM, aluminum composite material. You have your stainless steel composite material, titanium, copper, and zinc composite material. Now it's produced by the continuous bonding of two thin skins of metal under heat, pressure, and tension to either side of a thermoplastic core. Now, the first important word in this paragraph is continuous. When we either paint or laminate our material, it is a continuous process, so it never stops. Unlike a, a, you know, a batch laminated process where you have one sheet at a time, that's not what you want. You want a continuous manufacturing process because each uh, you know, square inch of this material is gonna get the same pressure, the same heat, the same tension to be thermally stable. Now, under heat, pressure, and tension, that is the next important uh, you know, couple of words. That's gonna keep this aluminum skin onto that core. So you're not gonna get any delamination. You're not gonna get oil, any oil canning because the skin is, is, is bonded to that core. You know, unlike something uh, like a honeycomb core that's glued on, that's gonna come off so quickly in the sun. Uh, you know, it's, it's not even funny. So thermoplastic core, that's the next important thing. That's gonna allow the material to expand and contract evenly with the weather. So you want that thermoplastic core, it's gonna keep the product very flat, very thermally stable. As you know, offers rigidity, superior flatness, for heavy gauge sheet metal, but over 61% lighter than heavy gauge sheet metal, excellent strength to weight ratio. You can bend it, roll it, fold it, drill it, as you know, and uh, you know we've seen it being used on all sorts of applications. Now here's the structure of MCM. Let's go back here. You have your surface treatment, you have your aluminum skin bonded to that core, you have your primer. Now remember, we prime both sides, that's unique to all Pollock. You have your color coat, you have your clear coat if needed, and then natural metals, you have your two natural metal skins bonded to that core. There is no finish warranty for natural metals because there is no finish on them. But you do still have your typical 10-year panel warranty. 
for interior MCM, it's going to be thinner skin, it's going to be thinner core, and most likely it's going to be polyester paint because uh, polyester, great for interior use, not so good for exterior use. Now, coil coating, this is continuous, like I said, very important. We have, uh, this is when, when we paint our material. Now, Alpolic, we use the die coating process. We are the only manufacturers in the industry to use the die coating process. This is going to allow us to control how thick the paint is adhered to the uh, to the aluminum. This is going to let us use the FEV Lumiflon paint. This is going to give us the smoothest finish possible. Unlike the other guys who roll coat, who spray coat, it's going to make them use more paint than they want to. It's going to create, uh, cause some roping marks, cause some color inconsistencies. Never going to get that with Alpolic. So first we have our special aluminum here. This is going to be our top aluminum sheet. It's uh, continuously unwound into an accumulator tower. This accumulates the material. So if we need to change the width or change the color if needed, it'll still be continuous. So the material will still be rolling through these rolls here as we uh, you know, take off the 62 inch wide, put on a 50 inch wide. So that's what those uh, accumulator towers are for. for go through the die coating process, like I said, most effective, most efficient way of painting the material in the industry. Heat it up, cool down, continuously wound up through an accumulator tower for our red top coil there. And any questions you have, feel free to let me know. I know I'm, I'm going through it. Uh, we're jamming here. Finishes available for a painted. You have your standard, you have your custom. Solids, micos, metallics, you have your prismatics, your shimmers, your pearlescence, your low gloss, high gloss, anodized colors, clear bra uh, black bronze, special order. It is architectural class one. Uh, and then you also have, uh, you know, your, uh, your frost, your, your light bronze, uh, dark bronze patterns, your image transfer system uh, provides a look of natural wood stone products. Now, have we uh, used our timber series uh, often as Walters and Wolf? I think maybe only once or twice in the last okay. 15 years. Yeah, I know on the new natural resources building that um, you guys did the uh, the MCM on the, uh, you know, on the windows, uh, I believe KPS uh, had Pacific Erectors install our timber series on the, uh, on the canopy there. So we do have uh, timber series on that project, but I know Walters and Wolf didn't install it. So uh, natural metals, we have titanium, we have stainless steel, like I said, four different types of stainless steel available. That is uh, very appealing to the architects I work with, uh, copper and zinc. Decorative metals, you have high polished, uh, you have brushed. High polished we've seen being used on, uh, you know, certain car dealerships. You also, high polish is used on anything that you need a reflective finish that you don't want, you don't want it to be heavy, you don't want it to break. High polish is used for that as well. Dew color is going to be used for your gas station canopy usage. Now, for your solids, micas, metallics, prismatics, there is directionality to the material. As you can see, two coat versus three coat. The two coats, specifically the solids, are not going to be as apparent for directionality wise as the micas, metallics, and prismatics. That's because of the flake, flake size and flake structure in the micas, in the metallics, in the prismatics. Now, because the micas have a that mica flake, think of it like when we are, say we're producing your MAI silver, mica silver material today, the flakes in the paint are all going to be laid the same way today. Now, that's important because you want to use the same lot for the same elevation of the building, and that's because of the grain structure. So say we produce uh, your MAI mica silver today and then produce some tomorrow. Uh, the, the flake structure will lay differently from today than tomorrow. So if you think about it, we have this directionality uh, slide here. Say you're mowing your front lawn, you mow the grass one way, you mow the grass the other way. Now the blades are reflecting differently off of the sun. That's the same thing with, with uh, alpolic sheets. Say if we have uh, material, we shift it to Walters and Wolf, your MAI silver, mica silver material, you install one uh, you say you install 100 of the sheets in the same direction, but you install one of the sheets with the arrows facing in any other direction. Now those flakes are now reflecting differently off of the sun, even though they are laid the same way. It's, it's installed improperly. 
it's going to stick out like a sore thumb. So that is something to definitely keep in mind when installing. That's going to basically make it look lighter or look darker than the other panels. So in, in reality, you know, most of the time we don't want that, but this project right here down on the bottom left, you have your University of Wisconsin Foundation building. This architect actually flipped the panels, the, you know, whatever it is, mica or metallic panels, and they use the directionality to their advantage. They won an award for this, uh, for this building. So you can make it look light and dark. Uh, it's almost like the Google, Google Event Center. Uh, you have those two different types of greens there. You can make that same look by really just flipping one, uh, one green. Now it's gonna reflect differently off of the sun. That's what I thought at first it was, but it's really two different finishes. So you can use the directionality to your advantage. Here, basic paint components, resin solvent, pigment and additives. In 1970, the first evolution of fluoropolymers came out, the PVDF Kynar, which is a thermoplastic dispersion. 10 years later, the FEVE, which we use as our standard paint of choice came out, which is a thermal set solution, meaning that it is chemically linked together. That's one of the uh, many benefits of FEVE versus PVDF. Now, paint type characteristics via polyester can get up to 10 year uh, finish warranty for high performance polyesters. You're not, you're not gonna get really uh, a great uh, finish warranty for polyesters because uh, the, the UV rays will eat that polyester paint like there's no tomorrow. Now for the PVDF, very important to have the 70 to 30% ratio of PVDF to acrylic. That's going to allow you to have 2605 compliant paint. Can't get up to 30 year finish warranty. FEVE, Lumiflon, uh, it does not remelt under high temperatures and pressure like PVDF can. Can't get up to 30 year finish warranty as well. As you can see here, uh, these are architectural colors or 30 year finished warranty colors. Chemical structure, PVDF, I won't even get into all this stuff. So for paint system properties, the differences, here are the main differences between PVDF and FEVE. PVDF, you're going to have a milky resin. I don't like to say milky. I don't drink milk. I drink almond milk. I like to say it has a little almond milky resin. Uh, so you have a uh, you can only really get muted colors with PVDF because of that uh, almond milky solution there. Uh, you can't get bright colors like you can with the FEVE paint. Uh, because FEVE is 100% clear resin, you're going to get much brighter colors. You're going to get much wider gloss range. It is chemically connected together, so you're not going to get uh, really any uh, move around in paint when we're laminating to, to the core. But the most important thing is both of these paints, if the PVDF has a 70 to 30% ratio, meets AMA 2605 for superior paint in the industry. That's uh, really what's most important at the end of the day when we're working with paint. Now for natural metals, you have titanium, copper, zinc, and stainless steel. Notice titanium is the only one without the same top and bottom skin. The reason why titanium has a stainless steel back is because stainless steel and titanium have very similar coefficient of expansion. So we really do this for, for cost. Titanium is gonna be the most expensive composite material in the industry. Stainless steel and titanium, because they can work together to produce a balanced panel, we do this for cost. So copper, zinc, and stainless steel, very, very important when you're working with an architect, when you're working with your client. They need to know that it must be the same top and bottom skin or else the material is not gonna perform how it's supposed to. So when you go in with Alpolic, obviously that's, exactly what we're gonna do. Uh, can't say the same with, with any other manufacturer. Here are some natural metal jobs we've seen around the world. That copper job is about a uh, one year copper look. And I believe a stainless steel job uh, in Oakland next to Frank H. Ogawa Center looks very similar to this. Now laminating line, we have our post red coil there on top. We have our bottom coil on the bottom continuously unwound into an accumulator tower. And then it's extruded onto a core. In this case, it's gonna be the black core, a polyethylene core. I know Walters and Wolf doesn't mess with the PE core. So that would be the gray core in this case. Heat it up, cool down, and protect the film was put on it. Cut the length and width. It's stacked, and it's ready for shipment. Easy as that. Now, product characteristics, physical product characteristics. As we saw in the YL Pollock presentation, you have two, three, four, and six millimeter available. We've seen Al Pollock really being the only one. Premier manufacturer still producing a six mil material. I know... Uh, Larson is out there, but uh, you know I don't really think Larson touches us. You have PE core, you have FR core, 0.005 to 0.032 inch thick skin. I know we looked at our heavy duty material. That's what the uh, 0.032 inch 
thick skin will be used on. And of course, our uh, brake metal is, is 032 as well. Width available, you have 38 to 62 inches wide. Really, we stock 50 and 62 inches. And then panel lengths can get anywhere from 72 to 288 inches long. Really, we only stock 146 and 198. Uh, but as you know, uh, we love to go custom material. Strength of the material, because of our manufacturing process, uh, really creates very, very strong material. Uh, it creates an I-beam effect. As we can see down here, four mil ACM is gonna be over 61% lighter than solid aluminum. So as we know, very hard material, very flat material, very light material. That's a recipe for success in our industry. FR core here, uh, as we know, um, if we're working with a building that's over 40 feet, we have to use FR core um, and, and Walters and Wolf, you know, goes FR regardless. Now, NFPA 285, I know that, uh, you know, we must have NFPA 285 compliant, not only material, but uh, application, whether that's, uh, you know, rain screen, wet seal, dry seal. Uh, so I know you, mo most of you are, should be familiar with NFPA 25 intermediate scale multi-story apparatus test. It's a 30 minute test on a 14 by 18 foot mock-up. There's a flame that burns inside of the room for about five minutes. And then there's a flame that burns outside of the, outside of the building. Uh, really uh, exemplifying if the flame came out through the window up the exterior cladding. Now there are some fire stoppers here. There are some thermal couple sensors that can't get above a thousand degrees. Uh, that means that the fire spread up the exterior cladding and the test will fail if that happens. So we have before ignition, we have seven minutes in, and then we have 15 minutes in. Now, you're noticing that the flame has not increased. What you're seeing here, you're not seeing delamination. You're seeing the water-based inorganic minerals in that FR core expanding. So when it gets to 375 degrees, the ATH in the core starts to release steam. So there is some very cool technology in this core. Uh, so you're not seeing delamination here. That's what I point out to the architects. You're seeing it expand. You're seeing steam being released. 25 minutes in knows the length of the flame has not spread and this test passed. Our friends up in Canada have their own, uh, you know, own exterior wall fire test close to NFPA 285, the ULCS 134 test. Here you have the AFCM E108 test, not in, the, uh, not in the code, don't need to worry about it, but it is an example of burning brand roofing tests. And then you have your NFPA 286 test. This is in the code chapter eight, interior usage. Basically what they do is they put a block of wood in the corner of a room, they burn it. They're looking to see how fast will the flame spread up the, up the wall, uh, you know, through the ceiling and how fast will the flame spread once it gets to the door, once it gets to the flashover point. That's basically what the test looks for. And like I said, any questions, feel free to just reach, um, ask them and I'll be able to answer. It. So I got one. Um, I got a job, the architect's yeah. asking me, we have some composite panels inside a stairwell and they wanna know if the, uh, your Alpolic with an FE core um, meet the class B flame spread rating per CBC for interior wall finishes. You know, that's, know um, that yeah, that, that, that's a great question. I'll, I'll have to reach out for that. Uh, maybe if you can send me an email or I'll, I'll get your, your contact information uh, and, and I'll, I'll definitely be able to get you that answer, but I'm not sure off the top of my head. All right, thanks. Yeah. So for uh, MCM versus other alternatives, uh, you have your typical MCM application versus, uh, you know, monolithic metals. You have batch laminated panels, you have sheet metal. Now for monolithic metals, you're gonna have limited to post-coated finishes. You're gonna have weight issues. You're gonna have um, some color consistency issues. Uh, for batch laminated panels, like I, like I mentioned before, you want a continuous process versus a batch laminated panel where it's one sheet at a time. You're gonna get oil canning. You're gonna get limited widths. Delamination can occur. That's really, if you have a product with glue that's involved, uh, it's gonna come apart, uh, simple as that. Skin blistering dimpling, and then sheet metal, you know, you have some oil canning, you have some rust, you have some weight issues. Uh, so for attachment systems, I'm not sure how much we need to go over this, uh, but two different types of uh, rain screens, there's pressure equalized OMO 508 and there's drain back ventilated OMO 509. What, uh, 
What rain screen has uh, Walters and Wolf tested to? Is it 509 or 508? Does anyone know? I can't answer that. Does anyone know? Not sounding like it. <laughs> okay, no worries. 508 is a, it, it's really a much harder uh, test to pass. Uh, basically what they do is they put 30 gallons, they dump it onto the, onto the attachment system. They're looking to see how much water they can't let, I believe over 5% of the water to touch the, uh, to touch behind the panel, behind the sheet. Uh, so, and then the 509 is basically the same, uh, the same test and you can't let 30% of the water uh, and it's re really a, a, a scale from one to 10. It's not really a pass fail test like uh, 508 is. Wet seal, uh, as we know, it's gonna be a caulking agent, baccarat and sealant. Now you will have some dust, you will have some, some dirt uh, that will stick to that caulking agent, will run down when it, uh, when it rains, but wet seal, we, we know, you know wet seal is very uh, economical. Dry seal is going to be your heaviest of the system. It's going to be gaskets. It's going to be filler strips. But those caulking agents and the gaskets on the wet seal, dry seal will need to be replaced every five to 10 years. So that is something when you're working with your client, when you're working with your architect, it's definitely something to keep in mind and to let them know because, um, you know, we, we don't want any leakage there. I think glazed in application, as we know, uh, you know, our six mil material fits perfectly in that quarter inch glazing system. Here's some uh, of our typical details for rain screen. I'll just quickly go over these. For column covers, we've seen uh, really six inches in radius all the way up to you know as wide and as long as a uh, bending mill machine can take. Wet seal, you have that caulking agent, back a rod and sealant. I'm gonna quickly go over these. The Burj Al Arab Hotel in Dubai, about 800,000 square feet of Al Pollock, which is awesome. It was the first seven-star hotel in the world. Now I think there's about five of them. Bethel Korean Church down in Irvine. I like to make a joke. Even God loves uh, loves wet seal. You have a loft hotel. Uh, notice the notice the reflections of the uh, clouds there. That's the uh, FEV Limaflon. Now when you go to the plant, most likely you'll be staying at the a loft hotel right down the street. Dry seal. You're gonna have those gaskets. You're gonna have. Uh, the filler strip gaskets will need to be replaced every five to 10 years. We'll quickly go over these here. Here are some pictures of our dry seal being used. Not our dry seal, but dry seal being used. Winnie Palmer Hospital, glaze and application. Yes, the wife of late great Mr. Arnold Palmer, the king in Orlando, Florida. Beautiful application here. Trump Tower in Chicago, not getting into any politics here, but a beautiful. Uh, Beautiful uh, project we've seen there in Chicago, stainless steel glazing application, six mil stainless steel. Interior hanging, three mil, basically what's gonna be used for, for interior. And then two mil is gonna be your gas station canopy usage. We've seen double-sided VHB tape being used. Here's some examples of interior applications. Oh, here we go. Oh, here's that. Perforations are available. Attachment system considerations, project specific environment, right? What looks good to you? What looks good to the architect, to your client? Code compliance, we all know codes. Project budget, really. Um, what's gonna be the deciding factor? Finished specification. This is really more for the architects. Uh, you know, the solids and micas are gonna be less expensive than the metallics and the prismatics. Really, I say the two coats are less expensive than the three coats. The PE is gonna be less than the FR. Uh, PE weighs about a pound per square foot. FR weighs about a pound and a half per square foot. You have uh, attachment systems. Uh, I'm not sure for Walters and Wolf what, what's more for, uh, for you all there, whether that's a rain screen or a wet seal, but we've seen you know, really wet seal being more economical. But uh, in my opinion, the rain screen application is, is much more uh, efficient. Uh, and um, there are ways to you know, like having a AMA 508 tested system, you don't need to worry about any leakage, but you know, with wet seal, when, uh, when you have men or women doing that caulking, uh, you know, agent, you can have some leakage. So 
that's something that uh, you know is, is is possible there. Writing a quality specification, you want performance, uh, Alma 2605, code compliancy, tested system, sustainability, we are sustainable warranty. As you know, Al Pollock has the best warranty in the game. Now I am here to answer any questions for, for you guys. Um, reach out anytime if you have any questions. Points to remember, MCM very cost effective. Extensively on exterior and interior usage, you can bend it, roll it, fold it, drill it, punch it, do just about whatever your heart desires to get that aesthetic look. And that does it for our presentation, everyone. Thank you so much for your time. We'll look at, uh, I believe I have some Walters and Wolf pictures here. Come on now, where are they? Here we go. All right, so we have the Kaiser Permanente. Yes, I took these pictures. I know they, they are, uh, they look professional. I know, especially that one on the left there. Just a really beautiful work that, that you all do. Moffat Place, uh, I was pretty um, stoned at uh, looking at these. Uh, I mean, it's, it's great. I know that Jay Paul is the, uh, you know, the client and, uh, you know, working with them there, you know, a lot, a lot going on in San Jose. Uh, Jay Paul is going to be, um, you know, they're looking at a lot of projects down there. So that would be great if we, uh, you know, got a few of those, some more pictures. This one, I make a joke. It just screams California. You have the California poppies, you have Google, uh, you know, that's California in a nutshell. Google Event Center, like what, like I was saying, in my opinion, this almost looks like the same finish, just with the panels flipped, uh, you know, so the grain structure is now, uh, you know, is now reflecting differently off the sun, but no, it's, it's two different finishes. Um, so Google Event Center, awesome stuff. Moffat Towers, again, Sunnyvale, 1255 Pear, New natural resources building. So what I was saying is our timber series is right here. I know it uh, doesn't show it in this picture, but now the timber series is installed right down there, which is pretty, pretty cool. Here's our zinc being used in Sacramento 515 Market, Sutter Health, Sacramento, Epic Chevrolet, one of our many corporate identity programs, BMW of Roseville, Roseville Auto Mall. Basically, all of the Roseville Auto Mall is Al Pollock, which is awesome to see. And then Top Golf. I believe uh, we're trying to get Al Pollock on the Top Golf down in San Jose. I'm a big golfer. Uh, when Walters and Wolf, uh, when you guys have the golf tournament, I will be playing in that. And trust me, whoever's on, uh, whoever's in my group, we will win. So, uh, Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. I have a for your question. Time. I, I really have a appreciate it. Question for you. Yeah, I got Paul. one question. Can yeah, you Paul. can you go back? Can you go back and talk about um, the replacement of the gaskets? In five years, I've of all the Apollo I've ever done, I have never heard of that disclaimer, and certainly not something I think I've ever seen us tell our customer. So I'm I'm just curious. Yeah, about you, you know, you it's you to win on the details of that. Yeah, yeah, I will. I will. Let me uh, let me get to that here. All right. So, you know, what what I was told when I first when I first came on with Al Pollock is that these gaskets right here they will start to deteriorate and they will need to be replaced. I believe that the panels will still be functionable, but the Gaskets, they will need to be replaced. Uh, they, they will just start to break down just like the caulking agent for the wet seal. It's really the same thing. Uh, you know, it, it'll start to, uh, to deteriorate. It'll start to, to crack. And that's when you need to replace it. You know, for example, when, uh, when you go into the city, you see a lot of wet seal, you see a lot of cracking wet seal and that's gonna cause leakage. So when we have that, that cracked wet seal, you know, that's, that's when we can get that leakage and that's when, you know, we'll, we'll need to replace it. So, you know, I was told, Hey, that's what, that's what I must say. And, uh, you know, I, I believe that the panels will still perform how they're supposed to, uh, but you know, it, it's always safe to, to definitely replace, uh, the, not only the gaskets, but the, uh, but the wet seal and, and, you know, the, the client really just doesn't want to, uh, doesn't want to replace it. So that's why we see, not many of them being replaced. Well, I, yeah, because I just I just did a project with about thirty five thousand square feet, probably forty thousand square feet of a Pollock panel, and that was never brought up. And I can guarantee you, the the owner doesn't know this, unless it's buried somewhere in the literature. But 
that's uh that's actually scary to hear honestly what's the what's the warranty is it five years because of that gasket or what what is the warranty no the, uh, a typical 10-year panel warranty uh i'm i'm not too sure on uh the warranties on gaskets or caulking agent we don't provide any warranty like that but paul let me get some more information for you uh you know i i, I don't want to give you any uh, misinformation here um that's you know to be honest i want to say that our uh technical service manager told rigo and i my counterpart down in, in socal uh to say that because we've seen the caulking agent start to crack and start to peel at around five years so you know that's that's what he said for us to say. And, and Paul, let me get you some more information because, uh, you know, I, I agree with you uh, where, you know, if the caulking agent does need to be replaced, uh, you know, that's definitely something that uh, that we need to get you more information on. So when you say, so you're talking about a, you circled that on a dry seal system, right? So you're talking about the, are you talking about the internal caulking yep. with the extrusions and how the panels applied? Yes, yes, exactly. You couldn't possibly do that without dismantling a wall. Yeah, no, I, and I agree with you. And, and that that's why that's why I must go to uh, Jim Moses, our technical service manager, and get more yeah. information because it, it really doesn't doesn't make sense to me why why I'm saying this, but I was told to say it by our technical service manager. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I have a seven I have a seven story building and this entire elevation, which is 350 feet long and seven stories high, nothing but all pal all panels on it, and it's that's. That's extremely frightening. But, but Paul, that. whose whose system is it? Is it just a? Well, I was I was getting there. It's it's an Elward system, so, so I don't know whether or not they're doing something different. You know, what, but this is what, a this is a. What do they use for caulking of their system? Right, if they're using silicone, if they're using EPD, EPDM gaskets or silicone gaskets, they're going to last a lot longer. I, I think you yeah. know from an Apollox standpoint, you know if you're using like a seam sealer versus a a, a caulking. For, for some of the ceiling and stuff like that of the panels, you're probably gonna get a five-year warranty on something like that. So I think they're just probably just trying to make sure they're covering their butts and saying, look, it's, you know, if depending on what I you use, it could it be as wrong. little as a five-year warranty or last as little as do five you years. Not, do you not have yeah. a dry joint system, Paul? It is a dry joint system. Yeah, so I think what, what um, they're mentioning for for the sealant and the gaskets is just that silicone over time when exposed to uv kind of disintegrates and like gaskets i think for example in this picture there might be a gasket between the where the rivet is going in and the space between the rivet and and the panel and just after expanding and contracting so many times they just get rigid and same for the sealant it just it just fails so well, there's I, no i, I mean, what it, it means. but system, in your in your all, system they're dry. Correct. In your system, it's there's only, it's like only a that. touch with rivets. Yeah, but we're talking about the, the internal seal of the corners of all the panels. Um, and I mean, unless, and, and certainly working with Elward and discussing this at length with them, that that never came up. And I couldn't imagine that oh, really? Elward, Elward would take on uh, that responsibility by not passing that along if the manufacturer, being you guys, are saying that yeah. That's got to be replaced in five years. That's where I get worried because it's never yeah, came from Melbourne. No, let me uh, let me get some more information for you, Paul, and, and I'll definitely send that over because that I, would be you know, fantastic. You guys have, yeah, yeah, no worries. Because it, it doesn't make sense to me too, you know, right? Where we have a 75,000 square foot job and, you know, after 10 years, the, the, the caulking agent starts to crack and, you know, that's a lot of work to uh, to 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 reseal all that all that material. So I, I agree with you, Paul, and, and I'll get you some more information. Appreciate Paul, you it. have a uh, thank you a waterproof membrane behind it, right? Yes, but that's but that's we're not talking about the waterproof membrane. No, I, I know, but if if for some reason the the gaskets are are, are caulking broke down after five years, yeah, there's a ventilated you know, facade behind it. Yeah, yeah I'm not I, I'm not worried about it leaking. I'm just worried about the comment. That that should yeah. be replaced. No, I, I understand what you're saying, but I think it's, yeah. that's a that's a minimum. And again, depending on what material yeah. you're using, and if L word used a a dial product or you know any kind of a silicone product for their, their which their I'm sure they seals, did, that's going to last a lot longer than five years. Yeah. 
I had a question um, regarding kind of perforations on on these composite panels. I, yeah. I saw that you had a slide with uh, perforated panels. What are yeah. kind of the implications on on the warranty? You know, and and yeah. is there any special steps that we need to take? Because once yes. you do a perforation, the core is going to be exposed in those areas. Exactly. Yeah. So let me uh, let me get to this real quick. Uh, there are some things that we must follow when we're perforating panels. Uh, let me get to this real fast here. Let's find perforations. Here we go. All right. So our tech bulletin here, if we read this. So first, if we are perforating panels, we cannot have exposed core within one mile of salt water or brackish water. Now, if we do have an exposed core, now we will not get our full coverage repair and replace warranty. Now, uh, so that, that's, that's a big, uh, you know, a big key here. So when we're working with, uh, with perforated panels, we wanna try to keep it uh, with outside of a mile from salt water or brackish water. Uh, now, when we are looking at, when we look at number five and number six, Open area, the sum of all perforations cannot exceed 45% of all total panel area. So that's one of the biggies uh, that, you know, I, I say that I work when I work with architects and, and our customers, uh, you can't have, you can't exceed 45% of the total panel area. And then holes must be no closer than one inch from panel perimeter edge. And then as we can read here, I if all see. the above conditions are met, uh, is eligible for the standard 10-year perforated exposed panel warranties. I see. Uh, That's two why mil minimum radii on bends. Yep. So that, that, those was, are really uh, the, uh, the, big, the big disclaimers. So I'm guessing maybe that's why all most of the applications for perforated or poly panels are interior. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. On your, uh, you said there's custom widths and lengths uh, of sheet available. Yep. Does that affect the lead time at all? And like, what's the minimum? Could you get like a 40 by 140 sheet? Yeah, yeah, so you can. So 62. Yep. Yep. So we have really, we stock most of our material in 50 and 62 inches wide, but uh, like, like I showed uh, prior, we have uh, 40, we have 48, we have 50, we have 51, we have 60, and we have 62 inches wide uh, material. Now, say you are able to get 40 by 122, there's going to be a minimum 1000 square feet. Uh, the lead time right now is I think seven to eight weeks for custom material. So we've seen that, you know, that's a long time. We were four to six weeks. Uh, we're going to be going down to four to six weeks any any day now. But right now we're still at seven to eight week lead time. And then you have, uh, you know, the minimum quantity, which is 1,000. You have those, uh, the lead times, which is going to be much different than the stock lead times. And then you have uh, pricing. So uh, yes, it, it will affect lead times, but for pricing, if we're going anything over 4,000 square feet, then you'll get stock pricing. So it really, uh, the really only thing, if we're going with a large project, really the only thing that's going to be affected is the lead times. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Now, do we have, uh, keep the questions coming. Do we have anything else? I don't think so. Which, I just, know, I really I like this, the slides. I'm glad. If we I'm could, glad. Get, could we get a copy of them? Oh yeah, I can, I can absolutely send you this as a PDF. Yeah, if you want to send that to me, Mark, then we can get it posted. We'll do Heather. Yeah, um, absolutely. And then um, we do have a part two of Mark's presentation on June 10th. And Mark, can you give a little highlight of what that's going to cover? Yeah, so we are going to be going over, if I can, uh, I can just pull it up real quick. So our number two presentation, which is design, or excuse me, painted finished considerations of MCM in today's architecture, uh, basically going over, you know, what's available in the industry. And then our number three presentation, which is one of my favorites, 
going over finish and surface considerations of anodized aluminum and natural metals in today's architecture. So we'll be going over uh, anodized material, the, the manufacturing process, the anodizing process, and then looking over natural metals and the considerations to take into account there. Cool. And that'll, uh, that'll do it. And if, if any of you are golfers, we have, uh, we have Tory Pines here at North Course, hole number 15. Uh, if uh, we don't have any other questions, thank you so much, everyone, yeah. for your time. And thank um, you. thanks, Mark. I appreciate. I appreciate thanks, it. Yeah, you're welcome, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.